Hello and welcome to another Mountain Coffee Outdoors video. I'm going on a little uh, overnight camp out tonight. And pretty much the only reason I decided to come out was just because it's uh, colder out this uh, weekend. I'm a little disappointed because earlier in the week the forecast said it was supposed to get down to about, uh, I think, 6 or 8 below zero Fahrenheit at night. Unfortunately, as the week went on, that fair, that the forecasted temperature kept getting a little higher and a little higher. So I think it's supposed to get down to about 6 above or 6 or 7 above tonight Fahrenheit. So at least it'll be secret digits. I was hoping for below zero, but I guess I'll take what I can get. That's all I can do. It snowed out here yesterday. Um, there's a few inches of snow on the ground. My hand's freezing holding this camera, so I don't know how much longer I can do this. But I'm going to load up some firewood, and then I've already figured out a spot to camp in for the night. Um, and tonight I'm just going to lay out in the sleeping bag, no shelter, just lay it out on the sleeping pad and some tarps underneath of it and sleep that way. But I better get to work gathering some wood up here. Don't have too much longer. Have a few more hours of light or so, and then it's, the sun's going to go down. One good thing about this area is that there is a lot of dead wood, a lot of trees that they've cleared out, well, killed anyway, in order to, uh, I guess, open up some space back there, thin the trees out a bit. Well, fast forward a few hours and, uh, <laughs> yeah, smoky. Got a fire going. I'm in my campsite. The thermometer over on the tree says that it's about four degrees Fahrenheit, so that's actually a couple degrees lower than the uh, forecasted low for the night. And it's only the evening, so by tomorrow morning, it should be even colder unless something changes. It's a uh, pretty much a clear night. I don't really see any uh, clouds, so it should cool off even more. I think it's time to heat up my uh, supper for the night. I actually brought a freeze-dried uh, mountain house meal. I think it's beef stroganoff. The reason I brought that is that's what you get in the uh, meal cold weather military meals. Because the uh, freeze-dried food doesn't have water in it, so there's nothing to freeze solid on you. So I think I'll just heat the water up in my uh, Swedish Arby mess kit and I'll try a stove. We're boiling. All right. We had two cups of water to the meal.
There we go. That's a good stir. Zip that up. Due to the fact that it's so cold outside, I think I'm going to put this meal down kind of next to the fire where it'll keep it from cooling off too much. Have the meal next to the fire there. Hope that'll keep it well. It's keeping it plenty warm. There's no doubt about that. Let's hope it doesn't warm it up too much. I think the beef stroganoff is ready to eat. It looks really good. It looks like hydrated, rehydrated pretty well. Bunch of little like meatballs in there. I'll throw some pepper in there. But anyway, I'm gonna sit and eat this and we'll go from there. I love being able to get out and camp when it's nice and cold outside like this. It's just really a whole different animal than when it's warmer or even when it's you know fairly cool outside but just not necessarily all that cold I mean it's not as cold as it was a time I went out last uh, winter but I was starting to think that I wasn't going to get a camp out in really cold conditions and you know this uh, this weekend was an opportunity that I felt like I had to jump on because this might be the last weekend where it's as cold as this that I am available to come out and camp in it. A few videos back I uh, remember mentioning how that, that, that really cold camp out last winter over New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Um, I think I heard the sound of trees popping from the cold. Like them freezing and cracking. I tracked down the uh, the quote that that reminded me of. It's a uh, it's a Robert Service poem. It's called "The Ballad of Blasphemous Bill." And I'm just gonna read a little that little section of it in front of the campfire here in the like three to four degree Fahrenheit cold under the moon. Maybe I'll get around to reading this whole poem at some point in time. But here it goes. You know what it's like in the Yukon wild when it's 69 below, when the ice worms wriggle their purple heads through the crust of the pale blue snow, when the pine trees crack like little guns in the silence of the wood, and the icicles hang down like tusks under the parka hood, when the stovepipe smoke breaks sudden off and the sky is weirdly lit and the careless feel of a bit of steel burns like a red hot spit when the mercury is a frozen ball and the frost fiend stalks to kill it was just like that the day when I set out to look for Bill but that uh there's a lot more to that poem the main thing I wanted to do tonight sitting in front of this fire while I had the motivation to uh, actually do some video recording with what battery I have left. I have some more batteries, but I wanted to read a poem that I heard many years ago. The first time I ever heard this poem was while I was at a, it was a winter camping training weekend um, 
uh, it was a Boy Scout thing, and uh, the one evening, one of the guys that was teaching the class read this poem, and uh, it really, you know, had an impression on me. It was the first time I'd ever heard it. And then, maybe a couple years later, I, uh, I heard it again in my uh, eighth grade English class, and uh, you know, a number of years after that, I, I figured out who wrote it, and uh, I got a, a copy of it myself, or a book that, that contained it. It's a very famous poem, and I'm sure that some of you have heard it. Um, some of you probably haven't. But uh, that's why I wanted to read it. It's just, it's a really good, it's a really good thing to read, um, you know, pertaining to like winter camping and uh, the winter in general, especially being outdoors in it, in front of a fire, camping in it, you know, trying to keep warm and comfortable when it's really cold outside. What this poem is, it's the Cremation of Sam McGee, and it's by Robert Service. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam round the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell, though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold, through the parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we'd close, then the lashes froze, till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight, in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed, and the stars o'erhead, were dancing heel and toe. He turned to me, and Cap says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking you that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no. Then he says with a sort of moan, It's the cursed cold, and it's got right hold, till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. A pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the streak of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh, and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried horror-driven. With a corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, You may tax your brawn and brains, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, through my lips were dumb, in my heart how I cursed that load. In the long, long night, by the lone firelight, while the huskies round in a ring, howled out their woes to the homeless snows, Oh God, how I loathed that thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed heavy and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. And I'd often sing to that hateful thing and it hearkened with a grin. Then I came to the marge of Lake LaBarge and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum. Then here, I said, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor and lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared, 
and the furnace roared, such a blaze you seldom see. And I buried a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks, and I didn't know why. And the greasy smoke and an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear, but the stars came out and they danced about, ere again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked, and it's time I looked. Then the door I opened wide, and there sat Sam, looking cool and calm, in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile, you could see a mile, and he said, please close that door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plumtree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood warm cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Yeah, the moon tonight is, it's not quite full, but it's mostly full. And that with all the snow around, it really uh, <sighs> lights things up pretty well. You know, tonight I'm going to spend the night without a shelter. I brought my uh, Canadian military, it's the two piece, three piece, four piece, whatever you want to call it. A sleep system that has the two down bags with the flannel liner in it and the little smurf hood thing for your head. I have it on some tarps laying over the snow with a big thick thermarest under it and a couple brought my couple of those wool blankets that are well partially wool blankets. I have it underneath them underneath the bag and I think I'm just gonna have like a little canvas poncho tarp laying over the top. It's one of the East German um, little shelter half. So I think I'm just going to lay that over the top of it to help keep some of the frost off of the bag. But other than that, you know, there's no tent or, you know, pitched shelter that I'm sleeping under. And there's nowhere near enough snow around here to make some sort of a snow shelter. So, so that's not an option, but I think I'll be just fine. I should, I'd, I should stay plenty warm in that bag. I'll have to show it in the morning when there's more light out. But I think I'll sit in front of the fire a while longer before I'll turn in. I'm kind of hoping to pee out most of the extra fluid that I have been drinking this evening because uh, I've been going to the bathroom pretty often and that makes me afraid that I'm going to have to get out once or twice in the course of the night to pee and I really want to avoid that if possible. So that's not gonna be fun. But uh, what will be even worse than that is getting up and getting dressed in the morning. That's always a, a pain when it's really cold out, but uh, just you always seem to manage to pull it off without an incident. But uh, nice warm campfire. Uh, on a cold winter's night, I think it's down to about, I think it is about three, three or four degrees Fahrenheit. See if it goes any uh, lower tonight. That's already lower than what the forecasted temperature said it was going to be, so I'm not sure if it's going to get colder than that or not. The sky is still mostly uh, pretty much clear for the most part, but I think it'll <clears throat> Turn off the video for now and hopefully my batteries are happy in the morning after freezing all night. But I'll uh I'll see you in the morning. The 
fire was easy enough to start this morning. There were, there were still some coals, so I just started piling some little cedar twigs on them and some bigger sticks over the top of that and, and some bigger sticks on top of that and let it do its thing. Started smoking for a while and then finally I gave a little bit of a fanning and that's all it took. I had flame. Here's what I slept in last night. <clears throat> yeah, no shelter. All I had was uh, you know, this Canadian military two-piece down bag. And it kept me plenty warm. On the thermometer, it said it got down to about two degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it was, it was pretty cold last night. I was kind of hoping it would blow, go below zero, but it didn't. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this Canadian sleeping bag, which I've shown before, it has, it has an outer down bag, an inner down bag, and then on the inside of that, there is a fleece, or I mean a, a flannel liner goes inside that and then for your head you have the uh, this hood that goes on your head and over your shoulders so you crawl in there and zip everything up and keeps you very warm and underneath me the first layer I put down between me and the snow was a, a poly tarp then I threw a canvas shelter half underneath um, then I put a, uh, a doubled over one of these partial wool blankets then the thermarest and this is the about the three inch thick model for some extra insulation then another one of those doubled over partially wool blankets then I had the sleeping bag on top of that and then over the whole thing I just threw a, another shelter half you know, canvas to just kind of keep the frost off the bag but um, yeah it kept me uh, kept me perfectly warm didn't have any problems staying warm at all last night I didn't think I would but uh, yep just me out under the well I'd say under the stars but it was more like under the moon because the moon was really bright last night but just me, the snow in the sky, and I stayed plenty warm. I'm heating up more water. I think I'm going to have the, <clears throat> this mountain house uh, freeze-dried scrambled eggs with bacon meal. I usually don't eat stuff like this, especially on just regular campouts, but uh, I figured it being my, my little cold weather campout, I would have this. I actually was going to eat this when I went out to Colorado and hiked up that hot spring. Conundrum hot springs I was going to eat this but I just I packed out that morning without eating it so it's, it is kind of an extra but it's kind of in keeping with kind of my do-it-yourself meal cold weather type food. This is the type of stuff you'll find in those. It's freeze-dried so you know nothing to no moisture in there to freeze salt as a brick. I'm also going to make some hot chocolate. I also decided to throw them, put some <laughs> half chunks of ice, half water into the Morris pot and get that boiling to make some tea. I think I'll brew up that tea and then dump it in my uh, smart flask. Um, mug thing. I like a good, rich you know, dark cup of hot chocolate. So I got this Swiss Miss Indulgent Collection dark chocolate. And on the instructions, you know, it says, empty delicious cocoa into mug, add six ounces of water, stir, sip, savor, you deserve it. So, you know, I deserve this. I especially deserve this, I guess, because I slept out when it was about two above zero Fahrenheit without a tent. 
or shelter. Okay, well, I don't deserve anything for doing that in particular. It's almost boiling. Now, some of these uh, mountain house meals, I don't know if you know this, but uh, these are made by a company called Oregon Freeze Dried Foods, and it's it's the same company that makes uh, the uh, the freeze dried foods that go into the military meals, like the meal cold weathers and the long range patrol rations or whatever they're called. Um, and they'll a lot of times they'll actually have the Mountain House logo on them. They won't look like this. They'll have that kind of a uh, kind of brownish greenish olive drab pouch, but it'll actually will say Mountain House on there sometimes. So it's actually coming from the same place. Those meals, they usually come all nice and, you know, kind of a small, small package where everything's kind of shrunk down pretty well. Whereas a lot of these ones that they sell to the general public, they come in a bigger bag. There's lots of air in there. They take up more room. This is, I believe, yeah, it's a, the Pro Pack version. And basically the Pro Pack ones, they suck the air out of them and make them smaller. Which I don't know why they just don't, don't do that with all of them. So it would probably make more sense, in my opinion. Pull out that op oxygen absorber. Alright. Trying to pull my half-frozen leather gloves here. I need to pour about a cup of water into my eggs here. It's probably about a cup. Give those a stir. that up. Put this back down here. A little bit warmer. Here my tea water's boiling on the fire. about half full. I think I'm going to throw about seven tea bags in there. A lot to do there. I need to mix up my hot cocoa. My hot cocoa that I deserve, apparently. I deserve it. They know I deserve it, even though they don't know me. Look at the sacrifices I make to make these videos. Instead of pouring it front over, away from me, which would have made more sense, I poured it towards me so that so you could see it on camera. No, I'm kidding.
you know, on these Trangia type burners, you don't want to screw the cap on if it's still hot. Because it'll melt that little gasket on the inside of the cap. Some Gorp type uh, trail mix stuff is another thing that you'll find in the meal cold weathers. Although I don't know if they would have raisins in them like this one does. Because the raisins do get a little hard when it's cold, but you can thaw them out in your mouth pretty quick. There's a lot of times mixed nuts and things like that in the, in the meals. There's still a little bit left. <clears throat> you can always just uh, drink some out of the mess kit lid thing in here. Nice lid full of tea. Stuck the eggs back down on what was left of the warm water they're hoping to just keep them from cooling off too much. I suppose these things are probably ready to eat. This looks like chunks of uh, scrambled eggs with some bacon in there. That's what they taste like too. Could use some pepper though. Could use some Tabasco, but I don't have any Tabasco. My pepper's almost gone. Might as well just don't put a little bit left is left in there in there. Maybe just a little touch of salt. Pretty good. The nice thing about freeze-dried meals is that they usually, as long as they're rehydrated well enough, they usually taste pretty good because what they actually do is take real food, cook it, and then freeze-dry it. Whereas certain other things, like some of the MRE type foods, they're Taking food that they, you know, that has to have a really, really long shelf life, and a lot of that's I think comes from the way they package it. But some of that stuff, I think they do kind of funny things to it in order to get it to uh, to last as long as it does. Especially like the bread type stuff that they have in those things. It's just not not the same as like stuff you would get. It's you know not not like normal bread by any means. The entrees, I don't know if you notice that as much, but I'm still assuming that some of those things, they have to kind of do things to them to get them to, uh, to kind of last, sitting on a shelf for two, three plus years at a time. Whereas the freeze-dried food, you know, it, it, was, it was normal food to begin with, for the most part. 
before they uh, freeze dried it. My tea's already halfway to being iced tea. Drink a lot of fluids, I'll get myself nice and hydrated here. Some of my, uh, my hot cocoa that I deserve, apparently. before it gets too cold. Also from a uh, from an emergency preparedness standpoint, um, if you're looking for food to uh, stock up on and keep around, You'd be a lot better off stocking up on freeze-dried foods than you would on MREs. Because MREs aren't designed to last longer than, I don't know, maybe maybe three, four years, something like that. I think that they, uh, I think they put a date on them about two years or so after they're manufactured. That's, they say it's an inspection date, and I think the idea is they're supposed to like open one of them up in the case and check it and make sure it's still good. Those uh, MREs depend a lot on how they're stored, obviously. You want them stored in a cool area. If they're stored somewhere where it's really warm, they're not going to last as long. You know, they might only be good for two years or whatever. But freeze-dried food, because it doesn't have any water in it, has a ridiculously long shelf life. Like this it says, best by May of 2048. See, these freeze-dried Mountain House meals actually have a, a shelf life of 30 years. That's like 10 times longer than an MRE. And that beef stroganoff meal I had last night also had a, a shelf life. You know, the best buy date was 30 years after it was made, so these things last a lot longer. And due to the fact that they're freeze dried, I'm not sure it really even matters how they're stored. I'm not sure that the heat bothers them. Well, it's my breakfast. part <clears throat> about the only thing left to do is uh, to uh, pack up my stuff and head on back home back to the real world again
This is my wife's Thermarest. I borrowed it. Hers is a lot nicer than mine. A lot newer too. I bought my Thermarest back in 1996, I think, and it's still going. Mine's the standard one, and it's a lot thinner than this one. It would have worked, but uh, why use that one when I can borrow hers? I think that pretty much wraps things up for me today. Had a good, good little overnight camp and some decently cold weather. Yeah, down to about two or three degrees above zero Fahrenheit. So, you know, I'll take it. It wasn't the, you know, eight, eight below or whatever I was hoping for, but uh, you know, the weather does what the weather's gonna do. Nothing you can do about it. But I am happy that I got out this winter at least one time when it was at least down to single digits and even have snow. You know, down in Kansas, we don't necessarily always have snow around in the winter. So uh, I kind of lucked out in that regard. So uh, all in all, a good, a good little uh, weekend to get out. I gotta wear the old mucklucks in some actual snow this time, not just the cold. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell to get notifications. And uh, if you know somebody that might enjoy this uh, video, be sure to share it with them. And this is Gareth with Mountain Coffee Outdoors. I will see you next time.